You are now listening to Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast Season 5. Two. Yes, hello everybody. This is your boy Ken, aka Mr. Gentleman from Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast. And welcome to another new episode of Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast. Hope all is well. And y'all already know what today is Valentine's Day. And you know, this is the Valentine's Day episode of Love is Love 2022. And y'all already know, if y'all is with somebody on a special day, treat them right, be there for them, love them. This is y'all day to celebrate together. Oh, remember that, you know, today, even though Valentine's Day is every day with the right person, make this day very special for that person. And y'all already know, in this episode, I will be talking about my love life, give okay, y'all up there my love life, and many more. And y'all already know what to do, sit back, relax, and be right back. My name is Lacey, and you are now listening to Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast. Back, everybody. Welcome back. And you already know this is the Valentine's Day episode of Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast. And, you know, this year we're going to do something a little bit different. Um... I'm going to tell y'all my, my, you know, Love is Love playlist. I'm going to give y'all my favorite songs about love. And my favorite songs about getting in the mood when it's the right time get, when you get to the romantic part. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give y'all 10 songs of my favorite song about my favorite love song. And of course, some honorable mentions. And we will start with this in no, partic- no particular order. So the first song that I got is Marvin Gaye and Tarrant Terrell, If This World Was Mine. And, um, you know, I know I love this song. But of course, the well-known version is the one with Luther Vandross and Sherry Lynn. And, you know, this song was very recognized um, doing you know, the movie with the wood. You know, when they keep hearing that song and, you know, and they, so, you know, it was basically became a song in the way. So, yeah, this is like one of my favorite love songs. So, you know, and my next one is Brian McKnight, my guy, Mr. Brian McKnight, love of my life. You know, that song, he killed it. The, the message, and you know, I love the song. That's why this is on my list. I love the song. I do want Mr. Brian McKnight on my show. I'm manifesting it. He'll definitely be in my show soon. I'm manifesting it. Next, I got Common featuring Mary J. Blige, Come Close. You know, this song was off the Electric Circuit album, um, produced by, you know, the Neptune. Pharrell was singing on the background. You know, I love this song, man. This song is just very, very deep, you know. I love this song. Next, we got Mally Mountain, Mally Music, with Beautiful. And this song, I was introduced by this song by my older sister, you know. And when I heard, I loved it, man. It just brings a, a, a beautiful message. And, you know, I love this song, man. Mally Music, man. Beautiful. Next, we got the legend, Miss Anita Baker, caught up in the rapture. You know, um, this came out in the 80s. Um, you know, this this they don't have this album on streaming service. But, you know, thank God that Mr. Anita Baker owned the right to our music now. So hopefully we see this song on many platforms. The whole album, I can't remember the album name, from this album real soon. I feel like this is, uh, I think Caught Up the Ratchet was the title, um, album title. Well, I might be wrong, but, you know, this classic Anita, Miss Anita Baker, man, I can't wait to bring out some new music, man. We need you. I do want that Anita Baker versus Sade versus, man. Next, the two fellas will be in the verses tomorrow. And first, we got News of Soul Child with So Beautiful. You know, this was on the album Love and Music. 
album, and I think I got the title right. And this was one of the, the singles of that album. You know, I love the song, man. This song is one of my favorite songs with music, man. And I know saying probably listening, the you know, homie did not fall off. Let me just say that right there. Then we also got my guy Anthony Hampton, Anthony Hampton with the best of me. You know, that song is an amazing song. I heard this song. I see my sister introduced me to the song. And then I heard this song also on um, the movie Brother He Love. And you know, and then he had to kill the song. They say he's so full. He got a soulful voice. He killed it. But music got this verse. Trust me, music got the verses. And then they got this classic from Zappy Roger, Trasman, Computer Love. And the funny that this song. It had two versions of the song. One version had um, Charlie Wilson, and another version had Miss Shirley Maddox on it. And um, so I'm going in the classic. It's funny how this song pretty much predicted everything that would happen now when it comes to c- computers, that people use computers, and people fall in love online and stuff like that. And the fact that this song was way ahead of its time the song was way ahead of the time it's just crazy to me you know I always love the extended version of the song it just um it brings a certain feeling you know you know I just love computer love man and last but not least my favorite love song um Michael Jackson later in my life you know something about the song yo um something about the song it just brings a certain feeling the way Michael sings the song it's just you, you feel Michael you feel a he was in love with this woman you know and the song was off the one of his best albums ever Stella I'm mad that it was not an actual single I'm gonna suck on that cause imagine this was a single man Michael would have killed it man I love this song this is an amazing song one of my favorite um, love songs of all time Lady of My Life you know, many artists sample the song. I didn't know, we just know one of the well-known ones, um, Ella Cool J and Boy to Men, but he love her. So, you know, um, this has always been an amazing song. I, I know probably many people will agree that this is number one on me people list. So yeah, this bird, this was a very underrated song off the Trill album, not gonna hold you. You know, this is like, you know, hopefully y'all like this list that I have for the love is love. Listen, I got some honorable mentions. I'm not done yet. Now, one honorable mention I got Whitney Houston saving all my love. Yeah, man, that song is just amazing. It is funny because I thought about this song when I heard, heard um, when I was watching Fatty Man and this D was singing to Laura, and he was singing to her, and <laughs> and Laura left the room and he ended up singing in the car. The house, this this um song popped up in my head. All-time favorite, Casey and JoJo. All my life, you already know this is like a lot of people wedding song. I mean, you create crazy you got two wedding songs that many people usually have. This and Jodeci, um, love you for life. So you know, um, Casey Jodeci Day song way been amazing. You know, I love this song all my life. All my life, yeah, amazing wedding song. That might be one of my wedding songs too, actually. My guy, guy. Peace of Your Love, another song that's uh, a classic that I love. And I love that love song that I love, you know. Um, like I said, many other artists, same for this song too. Many artists, too much to name, too much to name, but many artists same for this song as well. And this uh, next song is pretty much the album cut with, with from one of my favorite R&B albums, one of my favorite R&B albums, very underrated. My guy, Bobby Valentino with Love Dream. I gotta hear this song. I know a lot of people probably wonder what is Love Dream. Y'all gotta pick up that first album. That is an amazing R&B album, man. The whole album is it's just a straight classic. It's one of the albums that did not get a lot of credit at all. If y'all wonder if the single off that album it was Slow Down, from Tell Me, My Angel, you know, just to give them a few. But yeah, Love Dream, y'all. If you guys listen to the album, look for Love Dream. Perfect love song, man. Now, I'm going to give y'all my top, my five favorite Get In The Mood song, a.k.a. Make Love, Sex, y- y- y'all get the picture. So, so, 
So number one, not not in order, of course, none of these in order. But um, one, here we got Janet Jackson, Anytime, Anywhere. You know, I love the song by Janet, man. Oh, you've been a dope song. Shout out to my pro, Manny Mel, for sampling that song. And stuff like that. And, and, uh, and also, another artist, Kendrick. <laughs> we also got Jodeci, Come and Talk to Me. Y'all already know, when, when y'all get into the mood, when you hear the song, you hear the, the actual, you know, y'all know, and stuff like that. Always love the songs, Come and Talk to Me. Definitely this one to get in from. Next, we got Sade, Spit It Taboo. Yeah, I, I, the thing about this song is, I was to uh, like recently, I mean, as a kid, I used to hear the song, but I never understand the lyrics until I took the time and listened to it in my adult life. And I heard it, I was like, yo, wow. It's really, you, when you, you know when you love a song when you listen to the lyrics, listen to the melody, listen to everything. That's how I feel when it comes to this song. Um, Treat it taboo. It takes you to another place, and you can imagine. No, the image in your head when you hear the lyrics, imagine you got that person, you know. And next we got, you know, Alicia Key Diary with Tony Tony Tone. And um, you already know, I love this song, one of my favorite Alicia Key songs, next to You Don't Know My Name. This is probably one of my favorite Alicia Key albums. Next to the um, Element, I believe it's the Element of Freedom. That's the, that's the album with, um, um, Unthinkable, which I should have had that on my list too, because that's amazing song as well. But um, yeah, Diary, I love a Diary. And of course, we got the last but not least, the classic, the Isley Brothers, Between the Sheets. Y'all know this is a classic. I don't have to say much about the song, a classic. And yeah, um, but yeah, that's my playlist, y'all, for for you know love songs for for for, for love is love. And y'all can click on the link in my bio, the link in the show notes for the playlist for my date night for my date night playlist. If y'all want to get in the mood for Valentine's Day and stuff like that, and we'll be right back with the main event topic. Hello everybody, this is your boy Ken, aka Mr. Gentleman of Mr. Gentleman Like The Podcast. And this commercial break is brought to you by Mr. Gentleman Like The Podcast, where we bring many guests telling about their stories about and about their brand they got going on. Also about me telling y'all my personal stories about things that are going on in my life. Also, we have many spin-off shows on Mr. Gentleman Like The Podcast called The Old School Show. With myself and the Star Riding Ride, where we talk anything old school, which happened every fourth or fifth Sunday at 12 a.m. on the Mitch Gemini Like the Podcast Network. And another spin off show called A Conversation About New the Podcast, where we talk to many artists about their new the journey. And also, we have a roundtable new Knicks discussion about anything music, and which is come on every first Sunday at 12 a.m. on Mitch Gemini Like the Podcast Network. And yeah, you already know, if y'all need a podcast to listen to, check out Mr. Gentleman Like That Podcast. We are on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Our Heart Radio, Good Pod, and many more. Y'all can rate the show, five-star rating on Good Pod, Pod Chaser, and Apple Podcasts. You know, the more y'all rate, the more love the show get. Y'all can also check it out on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube now. Ken, a.k.a. Mr. Gentleman Like That TV. And also support the website of Mr. Gentleman Like the Pocket, Mr. Gentleman Like the Pocket.com. This is your boy Ken, aka Mr. Gentleman, and have a good day, night, wherever you're listening to this episode. Back to the show. Sure. This is Belinda Jaime, also known as Miss Mariposa, and you are listening to Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast. Yes, 
We are back again. We are back. And at this time, um, I'm a t- I am mean, y'all already know, every Valentine's Day, I update y'all on my love life and tell y'all a backstory of my past experiences and stuff like that. First thing first, though, what is love? What does love mean to me? I mean, love is a feeling. Love, you know, when you know you had that right person, you do anything for them. Also, love is God is love. Also, love, also pain, because sometimes when you love somebody, sometimes you yeah, have to make the hard decision that would make you break up with them. And I probably wasn't. Have I been in love before? Yes, I have. I've been in love twice. Um, one time back in 2007 and another time 2014 and um 2007 you know it was an interesting year and I met this one girl and um met her on you know this thing called Mouse that don't exist no more so one day I met up with her in the library and, and yeah started talking and stuff like that you know my first impression wasn't that great because back then, um, you know, like, you know, girls don't really do find me attracted like that. But um, she didn't, the person didn't find me attracted at the time, but we continued to be friends. And for some reason, things slowly just changed in her sense. I guess the more we seen each other, the more we seen each other, the more friends start having. Maybe, maybe I may be wrong. Maybe she always had feelings, but she didn't want to admit it. Because I would not tight at the maybe. But so then later, I believe it was March twenty March two thousand and yeah, two thousand seven. I'm all right. Cause I met her at the end of two thousand six. March two thousand seven, we had our first date. Many things happened. But yeah, but things they happen we had to get into a relationship to eight months later. Cause during that time, I was in, I was in other relationships, and she just wasn't sure about me because she because she would not. I wasn't the person that she wanted at the time. I wasn't her type. You know, at that time she had that mindset of not nah, you know not going for a guy like me, I guess. And trust me, back then I was not perfect at all. I didn't have I didn't, you know. My life was not together. However, it, it, it was not. It wasn't. It, I wasn't even met the gentleman around the time. I was doing going by the name Soul Star, and went and had a music group with my with my bros back in 2007. Yeah, we, we had a music group. We were making no music back in 2007. So then one day, um, we went. We went out day. Went out the day. We talked, and then out of nowhere, she told me how she felt, and I mean, as he told me, I felt out confused because. She's saying that she was feeling me, but her action didn't show that she was feeling me. And I don't know, I mean, at the time, she was the only person I wanted, you know? And she was the only person I wanted. I didn't want nobody else. Girls wanted to get, wanted to talk to me and stuff like that, but they, um, they was, I, um, she was the only person I wanted. So then one day we actually did finally happen. Yeah, we were thinking we were together and we was in a relationship. Um, the relationship wasn't great because um a lot of her part, I know for me, I was you know, I was in the process of getting myself together. I know I got a job, so I was gonna make money. So I would get I was going to slowly at the right pace. But she still wasn't sure about me. She was she was embarrassed to to tell her friends and stuff like that and a lot of things, you know. And it was just like it was it was it was a rocky it was a rocky relationship. But the thing was I I fell, I fell in love with her. And even when I wasn't treated right, I still wanted to try. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it hurt for you no know, many times, you know. Cause I mean right after I was very insecure, so like it was like she would hurt me and I was dead. It was one of those type of things. And then she started feeling other guys and I do try to fight and stay 
even when I would try to deal with other people who would probably could have been better for me. I do choose to end it with that double dude people and go back to her. And it became really toxic up to one day, enough was enough. And I finally decided to walk away from something that I I wanted to um I should have done, I should have walked away from for many years. And now we are in 2010. Cause even that, even even after me and her broke up, I was start dating, dating other people, but it didn't last long. But she was somewhat doing the picture. And then um after 2010, I was single for many years. But she was doing the picture on and off because we would do, you know, doing things. And then I officially walked away a year later. And um which was 2011, and around that time I started promoting and stuff like that. So then 20, I'm trying to make sure I get my timeline right. 22, as, as some people that, you know, um, I dealt with, and I kind of wish that I was still dealing with, the, dealing with them. And I can say three people who I felt like I let walk away. You, know, you ever had some people that you dealt with in your life and, and, they, you, you know, the term, the term is the one that you let, the one that you let, the one that you let let go, like you did let walk away. You, you, lost, you know that term that you you, lost, you you somebody that you wanted, but you lost them because of something that you did. And there were three that happened. So one of them, I met one of them at one of the spot I promoted at, and. Off the back, you know, we connected really, really good. And um, the thing about that was, um, we thought we would do drinks, but really, no. It turns out that this person was generally interested in me. So it was around my birthday. We went on our first date. But it was um, dinner, and I believe it was either a movie or walk around. We were, or we were told to do a movie, but it just didn't happen. And no, 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 the person, she was just amazing. A very beautiful girl. A girl that was completely out of my league. But she was somebody that I really was feeling. Even though it never got serious, but it was, she was somebody that I wanted to get serious with. I remember one time that, you know, I took this person on a date, we on our third date. This probably is the one of the most romantic thing I ever did. Um, went to one of her favorite, which was spot that she where she wanted to go. So she told me some things that, she, something that she wanted to do. So what I did was I remembered it, my memory, and I turned those things into reality. So one thing she said that she wanted to go to the spot, and I ended up taking her to the spot. She wanted to go to the dinner spot that she wanted to, to try, and we just decided to do that. And she wanted to do something that. Something magical, like, you know, a horse carry ride, you know, a Central Park. And I was like, you know what? Let me let me let me do this. And I did it for her. And I don't know, it was something that this person was somebody that I always wanted to, you know, wanted something to happen, but it just never happened, I guess. Because it was probably timing on my part. Cause every time me and the person wanted to work something out, it just always seemed like the wrong time. And so I always feel like she was the right person, but the wrong time. And even to this day, if I wanted to give it a chance with this person, I definitely would take a chance to give this person a try. Of course, if she do this thing, but I think she probably is doing this thing, but yeah, she like one of those girls that I let walk away. And of course, there's other people too that I let walk away. Another person that, you know, I had a crush on for many years. Then we had our first date. It was a cool date, but it was something that I kind of wish I could have went forward, and it just didn't work out. And plus, um, I had a big trust issue that made me mess up my chance with her. But now she she ha- happily married, and stuff, so I'm happy for her, you know, and stuff like that. And another person I let me away. By uh, this person, I dated twice, and um, I mean the first time. Things didn't work. Things didn't work out because of something that happened. 
and that time that it was on my part because I was going through a bad time. And yeah, it just it just sucks when you have somebody that you you wanted to give a try, and you end up losing them because of your mistakes. And you and you know you could have lost the person that you you know you could have been somebody you could have spent the rest of your life with. And you know that bothered me for many years. Even though two of them, I got over it. It's only that one that I wish that I could have really took a chance with a fan. Hopefully one day that chance will happen. So let's talk about 2014 and the year 2014 was a really bad year. I was already single for three years around the time since the having to walk away from my first love. And um, you know, one day I'm in the club, you know, dancing new, the club out to go on. And this girl, she was dancing, so I was being behind the dancer like normal, okay? And stuff like she would enjoy up her toilet for her birthday. And she would enjoy her, she told me, thank you for the dance. It's about you're welcome. So I asked her for her number. And she told me no, her boyfriend's over there. So, um, so I told her like, um, well, I apologize, he's a lucky guy. But I don't know what came over her. She decided to give me her number after that. So next thing you know, I would think to myself, she, I'm, I, I don't, I'm gonna text her to see if she get home safe. I know nothing probably not gonna happen because she got a boyfriend. Nothing gonna happen. She, she nothing gonna happen. I don't expect nobody to do that. I wouldn't want nobody to do that to me. But next thing you know, the next day she texts me back and saying thank you for the good time and stuff like that. And she said she instantly me. The thing that bothered me was like you, you had a boyfriend though. It just felt weird. And she just saying like so it was something about my vibes that wanted to give it a try. And like a big dummy in my part, <laughs> I took the chance. So me and that person, we went on a date and tell me tell me everything that's going on. And you know, and stuff like that. And I don't know, the the, the thing with the vibe was really weird, you know, the vibe was weird to the point that we connected, like, it was just crazy, like, I never felt this before, it was a thing that we connected crazy, and we just, you know, I guess hooked up, and the thing was, like, um, it was a song that came, came out thing, which was John Legend, you and I, that became our thing, and it was just like, wow, thing about it, you know, she, she was dealing with me, but she had a boyfriend. And then she decided to break up the boyfriend after we had a third date. And, and it was just weird, you know, I didn't, I honestly didn't feel right about the situation, but the thing was, I, I was falling in love with this girl. And, and the thing about falling in love with this girl quit to it, which I usually don't happen. And um, it was just a weird situation. Around this time, um, she would have a complication with me and her dude, and she told me that I guess she wanted me to be an open, wanted this to be an open relationship that I could do with anybody I wanted. And by that time, I would get to know somebody. And she and this person was a really cool person, and I ended up not liking that person. But due to this situation with me in the, the curse search situation, it kind of messed me up with the person that I would get to know because. Um, you know, she thought I was trying to, you know, play with her heart. And it wasn't the case. It was just a really complicated situation, you know, really complicated situation. But, um, yeah, so thing was me, the person who, you know, had a boyfriend. We, we thought of having a relationship. And things were actually, the thing of the relationship was actually pretty all right. But it was always that one issue that was hindering for her to fully go give her, give it her all was the fact that she do it there with her ex, do have feel of her ex. Meaning like the ex was public and I was in private. So honestly I felt like I was a side guy, basically. And that bothered me a lot because I didn't know where I stand in this situation. And once again you no, know, love make you do crazy things, you know? And sometimes it make you not realize your worth until you get out of it. 
And, you know, at the end of that situation, I end up hurt. You know, um, she ended up choosing him over me. And I'm not gonna lie, after that relationship, I was pretty much scarred for a very long time. You know, even though I know Polly was my fault for even going that step, it kind of messed me up for, for a very, very long time. So now me and her we've been on each other for like a whole, crazy whole year. So this was 2014, 2015. So from 2015, I was pretty much dating on and off for many years. And pretty much doing, pretty much dating for many years from, I guess you could say from, let's say from 26, 2015 to 2017. I was pretty much going on dates and just, and the thing with the person is she would not work, at, work out. But I was do carelessly doing things with my ex, apparently, you know. And um, yeah, but this made things complicated. Then by 2018, I started being celibate for like a whole year, which was a really good thing. You know, it was a really good thing. And I felt, it felt like I was like doing my thing, stuff like that. Of course, that changed in 2018. My dude was single around that time. I still was dating. And then 2020, we had a pandemic. I started talking to somebody during the pandemic. And it was a person that was a really cool person. And, you know, we've tried to get used to this whole new experience dating. So I started doing the virtual date. And with this one person, it was really the date. And we, we had one date and stuff like that. And the connection was really good. But then something happened. I She just put away. Uh, I think she had another dude on the side. She didn't tell me what it is. And stuff like that. And then 2021, um, I gave it the in online thing a try again. And I ended up then I was somebody in 2021. And um, I kept this, I didn't tell nobody about this. I kind of kept it to myself because, you know, I don't want any people in my business and stuff like that. And just because they work out. And, you know, the person was a, was a very cool girl. I mean, of course, we had our issues, but um, she was a very cool girl. She just wanted things long term, but I think very really far out of the future. And, this last relationship that I was in made me realize that at that time I wasn't ready for that because a lot of things started happening that kind of started messing me up and um started messing me up and just couldn't like it just couldn't work I felt like I needed to get myself together before I get back in a certain relationship so where I'm at now in the present day I'm single you know um, get myself together, try to get my health back together, you know. I recently had COVID, so I uh, try to get my health back together, fully together. Try to get my brand together. Try to get my finances just reach together. And slowly talking to people again, but just as now, just get to know them and just get to know them and um, stuff like that. And who knows, when things together with my part, who knows I would start, you know, going back out there and be serious for somebody again. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I do want marriage. I do want kids. I'll be 35 this year. So I do want to, I do want to, you know, do want a family. I'm not going to hold you. I do want a family. But for once, like, like, like for once, I'm not looking for it, though. If I see that I can spot the right person, uh-uh. If I say, I say this, if I see somebody that I know is the right person, and somebody who got the quality that I'm looking for, quality I want and the quality I need, I would definitely go for that person. And know that, you know, this is hopefully the person I gotta have forever, you know? And like I always said, love is a beautiful thing, but if with the right person, then oddly, that's the type of love I want, you know? The love that my parents had when so they were been together for years. That's the type of love I want. And that's the type of love I need.
And you know, when the right person comes, who knows what happened? You know, marriage, life, kids. We both have businesses together. But we we go probably do a pocket together. You know, I want something like that. And like I always say, anything is possible. You know, I've been through a lot when it comes to love. You know, a lot of girls did find me attractive when I was younger. They thought I was ugly, stuff like that. And um, it hurt my confidence for many years. And now, I don't feel that way like today anymore because I know my worth now. And I just know that. I know I had never gave up my love. I never gave up my love. Oh, it's new love is this. I just feel like I always wonder to myself, when is my time? Man, I know now that my time is definitely coming. Who knows, it might be really close. Who knows, the person that I was talking about who I let get away the first time. Who knows, that person might be coming back to my life. Who knows? Or it could be something completely new. Or it could be something that always been there. That I never, that they never expressed how they felt. Who knows? I didn't know anything is possible. You just have to have faith. And you know, and love is love. Love always been real. And yeah, I, I believe in love and I never give up on love. Thank you for listening to my story. I kept it real. Um, yeah, I know I do this every year. Yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed this, y'all. I'll be right back. Hello everybody, this is your boy Ken, aka Mr. Jim, and I'm the gentleman like the podcast and the Premier Boy Podcast. And this commercial is brought to you by the Premier Boy Podcast. Where four people do where we talk about anything about the culture. You know, host by myself, Ken, aka Mr. Gentleman, Mr. Aaron Sands from King Topic Aaron Sands, the Star Riding Ride, who is also my co-host of the Old School Show, and Long Live the Chief Molly Bell. And we talk many topics. From politics, music, sex, love, relationships, and many more. And also every topic that's going on in the news right now, many of our topics are very controversial. And the podcast show might not be for everybody because we talk about many explicit content. And yeah. So if y'all decided to check out the show, y'all be one because y'all might need a drink or two. And yeah, because this podcast is so crazy. I shocked they had not got canceled yet. So if y'all are looking forward to listening to the Premier Boy Podcast, check it out on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Our Heart Radio, many more. Each and every Wednesday at 12 a.m., you can check out the Premier Boy Podcast with myself, Mr. Aaron Sands, Star Riding Rod, and Long Little Chief Miley Mal. This is your boy Ken, aka Benjamin. Have a good day and night wherever you're listening to this episode. Now back to the show. Cheer! I just want to take the time to thank everybody for tuning in to the Valentine episode of Mr. Gentleman Like That Podcast. Remember, if you had that special somebody, treat them right, love them, you know, show them that you really care. Just always remember that Valentine's Day is not just one day, it's every day when you have that special person. So happy Valentine to all the couples, boyfriends, girlfriends, um, whoever engaged, whoever married. This is for y'all. And have a good Valentine's Day. Y'all already know where I'm at every Wednesday. I'm with my bro, the Premier Bay Podcast with myself, Mr. Aaron Sands, the Star Riding Rod, the Long Little Chief Mally Mal. New episodes of the Premier Bay Podcast every Wednesday at 12 a.m. On all streaming platforms, except Spotify. Also, check out my bro show, King Talk with Aaron Sands. I'm executive producer of that show. Um, the season end, but new season coming real soon. Yeah. But y'all already know where I'm at every Sunday. My show, my podcast show, Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast. We on Anchor, Apple Podcast, Our Heart Radio, 
Amazon Music, Gapaz, and many more. We are now on Spotify at the moment, but it'll be back on the platform. I will let y'all know. Maybe I don't want to go back to Spotify. <laughs> but I guess if you're back on Spotify, I will let y'all know. So, yeah. And y'all already know, check out the spinoff shows with the gentleman like that pocket presents. The old school show, myself and the Star Riding Ride. Every fourth or fifth Sundays at 12 a.m. on Mr. Gentleman, Like the Podcast Network. But the Gentleman, Like the Podcast presents a conversation about music podcast. Every first Sunday at 12 a.m. on Mr. Gentleman, Like the Podcast Network. Also, look out for Mr. Gentleman, Like the Podcast presents Date Night Talk Podcast coming real soon. Major announcement on next week's episode of Mr. Gentleman Like the Podcast. Make sure y'all listen to the end of the show for that major announcement for Date Night Talk Podcast. Where we will reveal release dates. We will reveal my female co-hosts and many more. So, you no know, look out. You no, know, stay tuned. And if y'all want to be a part on my show, if you got a business, y'all have a story to tell. If y'all want to talk about old school, if you're an artist and with your music play, or if y'all want to talk about your relationship status, send me a bio about yourself and everything that you do to my email, 10YPGENT at gmail.com. I repeat, 10YPGENT at gmail.com. Or y'all can connect with me on Mr. Gentleman, like me, or on IG. My <laughs> bad. Can underscore Mr. Gentleman. I repeat, can K E N underscore Mr. M R Gentleman G E N T L E M A N. And y'all can add me on all social, all social media platforms um, Facebook, um, Snapchat, TikTok, and many more. And um, y'all already know Mr. Gentleman, like the pocket website coming real soon. The relaunch of the Mr. Gentleman. Like the podcast website coming real soon. Also, check out Mr. Gentleman, like the podcast merch on T Public right now. We got some Valentine's Day merch. So check it out. Um, yeah, the merch store is out. And also follow me on Good Pods, Ken Mr. Gentleman on Good Pods. Good Pods is an amazing platform. We could see what everybody listening to, connect with other independent podcasters, their knowledge. Independent podcasters that is charged like Spotify or Apple want knowledge. So this is an amazing platform, and I think everybody should join Good Pods. It's an amazing platform for independent podcasters. Join Good Pods, Ken with the gentleman on Good Pods. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of the gentleman like that podcast. Have a good day or night wherever you're listening to this episode. My name is Imani, and you're now listening to Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast.